Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Niklas Bauer and now we're going to try something a little bit different. And when I'm telling you the amount of lead we're gonna put on this fly, a lot of people are gonna say, ah, oh, we cannot cast that, but you can, don't worry about it. So what we're going to try now is a fly that's gonna move upside down. It's gonna be heavily weighted. In my opinion, it's a killer pattern for pike and sander when they're standing on the bottom, kind of inactive, or if you have the possibility or if you're going to try this kind of like live scope transducers casting right to the fish that you see on a transducer where you really need to get the fly down really fast. Uh, then I think it, this is a really, really good pattern for this because mostly when you're doing that, you're casting on sander or you're casting on big pike uh, because you kind of don't want to cast on two small ones and so you don't really need two hooks. We're gonna use the uh, Erex 26 degree bent hook. So as you can see, it has a, has a bend, which is uh, most likely used to be, uh, we, we use this for a lot of sculpin patterns and stuff like that, but it's also an excellent hook for this. And under here, we are actually going to put a split shot of four grams. And a lot of people say, oh, four grams, can't cast that. Well, it's not a problem. Most of your pike flies are actually weighing in at four or five grams, regardless if you have them weighted or not. So this is not gonna be that heavy, and it's not pr no problem at all to cast this with a nine or a 10 weight, so don't worry about it. So it actually is helping a lot of people cast, but you have a little bit heavier fly, it, it turns out the line a little bit easier. But it makes this fly sink really well, uh, get down to a deeper water much easier, and also um, it is just, Keeping, the, keeping it down in that zone where the fish is a longer time. And when you're fishing these live transducers, it's really important, or using the live transducers, it's really important to get the fly down before the, uh, uh, the line is. So you want that right angle so the fish really moves after it. So it's not an advanced fly. You can basically play around with all different types of materials. We're gonna use bucktail, nayat, and some flash. Uh, we're gonna tie it a little bit different way uh, with a lot of inspiration of Gunnar Brammer in the US. So check out his videos, they're really, really cool. Uh, so we're gonna hollow tie the night. And of course, as you know me, we're gonna use the tail in the end. These are super effective, especially for Sander when, we're, when, when you're targeting Sander with these flies. They really, really like this. So this is the topic of tonight. Check it out. So what we are going to do here is we're gonna put a split shot here. And of course, here you can play around with different split shots. I go from like two grams up to even a five gram split shot. And these are quite heavy ones, but uh, it's not a problem to cast, as I told you before. And uh, we're gonna, in this particular fly, we're gonna run a four gram split shot. So it's quite heavy. We are gonna position it uh, maybe a centimeter behind the last bend of the hook here, but I don't wanna put it on a naked hook. So I want to put the thread base there first because then it's much better to attach the uh, split shot. So, as you can see, we are basically almost a centimeter into the hook. And we are going to go with the thread behind this afterwards because we are going to start after there. So that's what we're going to do. And then we take the split shot. You need to open it a little bit with a plier. And then you want to come down with this down like that. I like to flip it up so I can see what I'm doing when I'm doing this. Then you take a flat plier and try to squeeze it around the hook and try to keep the plier straight when you're doing this so you don't bend it. So you don't squeeze the split shot in any directions now. And kind of push that together. We just put a small drop of super glue on each side here, just to secure it a little bit more. It usually stays on really well when you squeeze it around your uh, thread. So now we're gonna start with the fly here.
So we built this fly up now, we have the back tail and the tail, we have a little bit of wider flash like I normally use, so it doesn't tangle too much with the tail, and then we go into a little bit thinner ones, and as you can see it's, it has a lot of profile, but still it's very sparsely addressed, and that's very important when you want a fly to sink fast, you know, because the more material it, you put onto it, and the more bulkiness and more volume it's, or more air it's going to trap, it's going to sink slower, so keep it lightly dressed. What we're going to do now is, as you see in the white one in the previous pair is we're gonna uh, hollow tie the uh, nyat and uh, I think it's a super good technique which um, basically I saw at um, some of the videos that uh, Gunnar has done it is a fiber that is a little bit hard to grip uh, if you just cut it off uh, but when you kind of taper the ends and reverse tie it over you keep the bulkiness but still a very lightly dressed fly so Big, big, big up to you, man. That's a good technique. So we're gonna throw some of these short fibers away here because all this under fur is a little bit too much to work with. So we are not gonna use all of them. And then we're gonna taper these ends. We're also going to make sure that these fibers, if they are a little bit too long, we can kind of like pull them out or we can just reassemble them into the bunch here. I think this, uh, we don't want to go 
too far back here because we don't want to interfere with the rest of the fly here. So, but uh, keep it like this. And the whole key with this are, are to basically taper all these ends. So when you tie this in and then reverse tie it or hollow tie it, you really get that nice profile in a really good way. Really like how this color, um, which is a burnt smurf blue, really mixes into the white and the pearl. It just becomes super cool color in my opinion. Really a saltwater color, but it's working excellent for pike and also for sander in, in a little bit clearer water. So basically the only thing we're going to end this out with is a nice head of um, Titan dub or Predator dub. I just like that because it, it just becomes that natural and, and really nice and cool neat head. So of course you can put some ice on here and fish it right away. But I like those heads made from dubbing so we're going to push that in, for, in front of this. So this fly I, I'm going to use uh, just normal um, uh, stick on ice. This is 7.1 millimeter, but I'm going to use a silver color for them because I really like that flash to it. And I'm not going to do a soft head here. I'm going to do a hard head for this because I want this to really drop on the bottom and I want that head to be a little bit softer. So when it touches the bottom, it actually makes a little bit sound. So I'm not going to use the flexible stuff on this one. I'm going to use the hard stuff. So it's going to be thin man and then it's going to be classic resin on this one. And if you really want to see into detail how you do heads with UV resin and stuff like that, so uh, then you should click out this video or this video or some video we're going to have here somewhere uh, about how to use uh, uh, UV resins when you're doing heads with, with uh, stick on ice. So as you can see now, when I've been working with the two different viscosities, so we'll be using the Thin Man and the Classic. And the Thin Man is to get the resin really into the, into the Titan dub. And then uh, I'm working with the classic over to get a little bit because we're doing quite a big head, but I want this head to be stone hard. So uh, and but still keeping that small profile. So you get this glass-like head uh, that really, when it goes onto the bottom, it really, uh, really makes a little bit sound too. So there we have it, our uh, Nyat bucktail, kind of flashy, with a silver XL dragon tail in the back here. Of course, when this gets wet, it gets a perfect profile in the water and a and, uh, nice silhouette. But it's, it's mostly dressed with materials that really loosens the water very quickly. So it's going to sink well, has a nice profile against the surface. So even fish that when you're moving this upwards in the deeper water, they makes a really nice silhouette. So in general, a very good pattern in my, in my opinion. 
Uh, I'm using it a lot, you know, for uh, fishing a little bit deeper waters uh, when you have places where you need to get that fly deep down, like eddies in, in big rivers and stuff like that, where it gathers a lot of bait fish and also a lot of pike. So tie up a bunch, try it out. Don't be afraid about that four grams of lead because you will be able to cast it with no problem at all. And of course, if you want to win this fly and, and cast it, please subscribe, leave some comment in the thread, and uh, we'll be happy to send it out for you. Tight lights.